three proven techniques for overcoming procrastination to get the work done. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's about realizing that everyone starts out with inherent strengths, weaknesses, and blind spots. And it's about turning blind spots into weaknesses and then relentlessly attacking weaknesses to turn them into strengths to grow our talent. But all the talent in the world without dedication probably won't be enough. So no matter how talented a writer is, it's so important that they consistently work and they put the time and energy in. And a lot of writers deal with procrastination and I, I get writers sent to me who deal with procrastination. Now, you know, if I was working with a writer, I would really want to try to find out why they're procrastinating, what it is they're avoiding, what their fear, what their triggers are. So it is a very personalized conversation, but I can share three techniques that work for a lot of people, maybe. And so hopefully your viewers, at least one of these things might be helpful for them. And I'd suggest trying all three. If none of them work for you, try to find some other things. But um, there's a good chance that maybe at least one of these things might help. So here's the first thing that um, I'd suggest trying out. And I call it breaking the glass. And so there's a tale of a, um, oh, of a Zen master, and he has his disciples. And he has the most beautiful, delicate wine glass ever. I mean, it makes people cry it's so beautiful, but like any wind, it would shatter. And he's passing it around to people to be in the moment with this amazing glass. And this one disciple doesn't want to touch it because he's so afraid, right, that he'd break it. And, um, and, he, and the disciple turns to the Zen master and he goes, aren't you afraid that you're going to accidentally break this thing of beauty? And the Zen master says, in my mind, it's already broken. And so how this applies is, so when a writer procrastinates, almost always they're trying to avoid doing something because there's a fear or something they're afraid of. That's generally why we procrastinate. And so what I will do with a writer is ask them, so let's say they're procrastinating uh, finishing the script or starting the script or whatever. What are you afraid of? Let's say you finish the script and, and you can say rational fears and irrational fears, but what are you afraid of? You know, it's different for different writers. It might be, you know, the really Scott deal when I wrote Metropolis, that was my first ever script. And so if it went in and they didn't think it was very good, I probably would never get another job offer because anyone who's going to hire me is going to call Ridley and say, how was Metropolis? And if they're like, eh, that's it. So I had a real fear that if this script wasn't good enough, I would never get another job. My agent would drop me. I was literally afraid that my girlfriend would leave me and I would become homeless and live on the streets eating garbage. I had all these fears. Now, some of those are rational. And some are irrational. My girlfriend loved me. You know, she married me. She was never going to leave me because I wrote a bad script. And I wasn't going to, all my friends weren't going to abandon me. But there were rational fears. It could have ended my career. And my agent could have dropped me. Those are absolutely rational fears. So first thing is like write down everything you're afraid of and have fun with the irrational fears. Because when you write them all down, the irrational fears usually lose their power. And you can say, this isn't going to happen. This is just some crazy thing in my head. This isn't going to happen. Uh, this could happen. Even if I thought it was unlikely my agent would drop me, it's still possible. So that is a what I would say a rational fear. So pick the worst rational fear. Let's say for argument's sake, the worst rational fear is my agent would drop me. So what we often do as humans is we want to avoid pain. We want to avoid our fear. And so we want to run away from it. And that is what often causes procrastination. So the breaking of the glass is instead of being afraid that you're going to break the glass, run to it. In your mind, say the glass is already broken. So let's say the worst thing for me is my agent's going to drop me. So what the exercise is, I sit down and I, I really use my imagination to pretend that I've written the script, Ridley hates it, and my agent is dropping me. I would literally write out the phone conversation of what I think she would say and what I would say. Try to be very realistic how I think this would happen. And what I'm looking to do is to fully experience it happening. I mean, you should feel terrible. You should feel like you should really believe your agent has just dropped you or whatever it is that your worst fear is. You should experience it. And then you, know, you feel terrible. 
take a couple deep breaths, and then write, what would I do in that situation? What would really happen? And I realized in that situation, I would learn from my mistakes. I would write another script. I would try to get better. I would try to get another agent. There's no guarantees that I would, but I wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be the end of me. And I still would be in this wonderful relationship. I have all my friends. If I had to, there's other things I could do to make a living. And I realized like, it's not as bad as I was imagining. And, and it takes the power away from that fear. And also what I see a lot in writers is when they do that, they're like, you know what? If I do write this script and it ultimately fails, I wanna go down swinging. I wanna write the script that I would write. I wanna follow my instincts. I remember an agent told me that once, which is the worst feeling is when you don't listen to your instincts and you fail. If you listen to your instincts and it ends up failing, you can sleep at night and you can learn from that. So the breaking of the glass is imagine your career is over or somebody's like, the greatest thing is I'd write the script and it wouldn't succeed and I'd, I would, I would quit writing. Okay, so imagine that. Imagine you wrote the script and it failed. Would you really quit writing? And if you did, what would happen? And, or would you not quit? Would you write another? And experience the worst thing, come through the other end and realize it's not as bad as I thought. And I'm gonna be okay. And then you're not as afraid of that anymore. And it diminishes the fear even a little bit. And if you could diminish the fear a little bit, that might be all you need to get back on track and write. Now I've worked with writers with, with chronic procrastination issues and they literally every day as part of their practice, they'll do this exercise for 20 minutes every day before they start writing. That's pretty hardcore. Most of the people, they'll do it two or three days and then they get going on the script and then they'll just use this exercise when they need to. When they're really stuck and fearful, they'll use this exercise. So. That's one thing that writers can try. And it doesn't work for everybody, but it, it has worked for far more writers than it hasn't. And sometimes it just helps a little bit and that's all you need, but sometimes it helps, it, it profoundly helps the writer. So it takes 20 minutes to try it, see what happens. So that's one, one thing that someone can do. Here's a second thing that someone can do who suffers a lot with procrastination. And this one has worked for almost everybody. This has a very high batting average. So one of the things, in addition to why are you procrastinating, I'm always interested when I talk to a writer, what do you do when you are procrastinating? What do you do besides writing? And you get a very interesting, bizarre range of answers, you know, um, from watching TV to playing video games to things I don't wanna talk about in this interview and you know, lots of different cleaning, Obsessively cleaning the house and whatever. Okay. So what I, the exercise how I'll train this writer is, okay. So I want you to like list out different things that you could be writing, not scripts, nothing with stakes, that would be really, really fun, and really engaging. You know, some people, they like write really angry letters to people in their lives that they're not gonna send. Or I had someone who's like, I've always wanted to be a stand-up. I don't think I'm funny, but I would love to write jokes. I had someone, uh, she was uh, in France and she was, I've always wanted to write an opera, just for like the hell of it. Um, I've had, I had someone say, I've always wanted to write a porno film. I, I just think that would be so much fun. Why not, right? So you make a list of things that and, and these are obviously gonna be things probably that you would never think you're gonna make a living doing. Well, you know, writing angry letters to your parents or people that wronged you, um, you're probably not gonna make a living doing that. So then what happens is, okay, you have your script and you're supposed to be writing your script. You have time set aside, I have this two hour block to write in my script and you're not writing. Then what you're gonna do when you procrastinate is one of these things. So you're gonna be writing your opera. You're gonna be writing your porno film. You're gonna write angry letters or forgiving letters or whatever it is. Because here's the thing. When someone's at the keyboard writing, it's so much easier to slip back into the script. So what I'm training people to do is use writing as their, proca as their procrastination tool from writing. So instead of writing, so you're not writing, so instead of watching video games or cleaning 
or whatever it is you're doing, you're not writing, so instead, you're writing. And what happens is it's so much easier for them to just slip back into writing. So that can be a really effective tool. And I found that um, that works for a large number of people. So take that out for a spin and see what happens. Maybe that can be helpful. So third and final tool, and I'd say this is one I, I rarely need to get to. This is a little bit of breaking the glass in case of an emergency. So if it's a really, really hard, hard case to solve, the, uh, the breaking the glass of running at what you're afraid of as opposed to running away and experiencing it coming out the other end and or using writing as a procrastination tool, they're not working. So this is like, okay, we gotta do something hardcore for you. Then I, I use the uh, exercise of breaking the routine. And so what I do is I say, I want you to set up a space where you write, you may, maybe you already have one. Ideally, a separate room, not everyone can do that, but if you have a room where you work and you can literally have a room with a door, like an office or a spare bedroom or some part of the house, could even be a closet. I have people like clean out a closet and use a closet because they're in an apartment. But you, it's, it, you don't have to have a door, but it's great if you have a door. And when you go in this physical space and shut the door, that's your writing space. And the rule is that when you're in your writing space, you have to be writing. You, you, fingers have to be moving across the keyboard. And at the moment that stops happening, you must get up and leave that room. Because that is a writing room. It is not a non-writing room. It is not a procrastination room. Now when you leave the room, you're going to leave for five minutes. And only five minutes, and I'll say why in a moment. And I want you to do something in those five minutes that can help try to get you back into a writing space. So maybe it is, maybe you do go write something, but not in that room, somewhere else. Or some people play the guitar, some people journal, some people um, just do a, a fast walk around the place. Um, some people might meditate, yoga, experiment with things that help get you out of your fear, that help center you back into a calm, centered space. Five minutes on a timer. You can't take more than five minutes because the part of you that is trying to, there's a part of you that doesn't want you to write. You have to understand that. There's a, you know, we have this like lizard brain structure and we have a part of us that tries to prevent us from suffering. Like if you put your hand on a hot stove, you'll pull it away. Um, and that part of us doesn't distinguish between physical pain and emotional pain. So I remember when I was in high school, terrified of girls. And I remember being at the dance and I'm like, I'm going to ask that girl to dance with me. And I'm walking over there and my lizard brain's like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Everyone's watching you. Not true. Uh, and she's going to say no, maybe. And it's going to, everyone's going to ridicule you and your whole life, you're going to be known as the guy that got turned down by Jenny. Don't ask her. And it was all the, like my heartbeat, the adrenaline, the fight or flight mechanisms going off. And it was terrifying. That's why there's so much alcohol with the mating ritual because the alcohol can calm that down. So there's a part of us that doesn't want us to write because if we write, we can fail and we can be rejected and that really hurts and that can feel really bad and our survival mechanism might want to stop us from that. So the reason we only go do something for five minutes is if it's longer then the part of us that doesn't want us to write goes, oh, I procrastinate, you leave the writing room for a long period of time, I have power over you. No, five minutes. And then you go back and you write. Now let's say you go back and you, you get up, you leave that room, and you do something for five minutes, it could be the same thing, and you go back in. The rule is you're never not writing in that space. That's a writing space. You know, just like they say in insomniacs, if you're having trouble sleeping, you should get out of bed and you shouldn't stay in bed. You don't wanna muscle memory train yourself that you can stay in bed and not sleep. You're not gonna, you're, you only write in that room. And when you go in that room, I mean, literally, if you have to, just force your fingers to go across the keyboard and do nonsense, because at least that is the motion of writing, and then just try to write. And if you only write for like 20 seconds, and then you like freeze up and you procrastinate, you get up for five minutes. And I have, this is really hardcore cases, but I'll have people that for weeks on end, they're in that room for 20 seconds, a minute, two minutes, and then they keep doing the five minutes. And if you were to watch them, they're constantly leaving the room for five minutes, playing their guitar, meditating, going back in that room. At some point, they get so fed up with leaving that room. 
And the, here's the other thing. In real life, if you have uh, someone who keeps coming into your workplace when you're writing and saying, you shouldn't be writing. This isn't any good. You're no good. Uh, this could fail. This isn't safe. And they have power over you. If every time they show up, you leave and you don't listen to them, you just walk out, over time, they're going to stop showing up. So that's breaking the routine. You just always leave that room and do something for five minutes that can help calm you and center you. And then you go back in that room. And some people, they'll do that for a week. And then they're able to write for five or ten minutes. And then they start to procrastinate. And then they, they, it becomes a muscle. And then at some point, they can't remember that it was ever procrastination was ever a problem for them. I, was, I really suggest doing the break the glass exercise and the um, making writing your procrastination tool before you do this because those are quicker and, and in the majority of cases they will do the trick. But if they don't, this is a more hardcore tool that you can try. And so far I've never worked with anyone that some combination of this didn't, didn't work. It's not to say that someone listening to this will try all three and it won't work, but I think most people who are listening to this, if they struggle with procrastination, at least I hope, I hope that at least one of these or some combination will do the trick because I used to procrastinate and I hated it. it. It's like at the end of the day, I would feel so exhausted from not like the energy of not working and and resisting something. Ah, it's just it's so life draining. It's terrible. And I know people that get in the habit of that and that's just it becomes a habitual exercise for them. So these are ways that you can get out of that habit. So hopefully anyone is suffering that way. One of these will help.